Hello everyone, Scott here again with another episode of Hyperbole. I know it's hyperbole, but Hyperbole makes it mine. Just got out of Star Trek Beyond. And I know I've got to get caught up on box officers. There's some interesting stuff coming, especially with the Divergent series. But uh, briefly, just to talk about Star Trek, as I just saw it. It's been a bit of a whirlwind week-ish time for me. Uh, as mentioned, three weekends ago, four weekends ago... I was in Montreal, which delayed a box officer for a day, and then I worked a week, then I was out of town for two weekends in a row, and we're about to hit the third weekend. Well, I've been back for a week and just trying to get caught up on everything, and it's been crazy. So Star Trek has been an awesome thing to just kind of go in and see, because it's a bit of escapism, and yet at the same time, they've kind of faltered and never really had a good identity, or at least one that I like. I always enjoyed the original movies, and I enjoyed the remake movies, and the TV series has its moments, because there's multiple series, and it's, I mean, the first movie's slow, the second one, I think, is overrated, might be an episode, third one's alright, fourth one's a lot of fun, fifth one's dog poopy, sixth one is fun, I think, uh, seventh one was a misuse of everything, first contact, I really enjoyed, insurrection bored the crap out of me, and I've not seen Nemesis, even though it's in the collection. The new Star Trek that takes all that and moves forward, I thought was fun. My mom loved it. She actually cried at the end of it because she remembered coming home from the original, uh, from school to watch the original series, and it felt like, to her, seeing old friends again. It was it's a really cool thing. Um, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it really felt like original series type stuff, which Star Trek had diverted from since the 80s with Next Generation and even the movies in some ways. So to see this come along and really reinvigorate things in that way, okay. In the Darkness was the worst kept secret in the world with Khan. And he was a lot of fun, but everyone was kind of just competing to be like him. Because he stole the show and never gave it back and no one had a chance. So what could they do with the third? Abrams is out as director. We've got Justin Lin in uh, a Fast and Furious fame. And he brought that franchise to another level. So what could he do with Star Trek? And it's... I mean, to say it's out of his wheelhouse is a discredit to wheelhouses. He does car racing movies that have kind of turned into big action, adventure, espionage, heist, amazing things. This is a Star Trek. <laughs> okay. Um, and it, almost immediately, you've seen in the trailers, we get the Enterprise breaking and crashing. Now that happened in Into Darkness, let alone Generations and First Contact. And Insurrection had them stranded on an alien planet. And... We're retreading a lot here, and it really, really, really dragged in that regard for me. But the characters are the strongest since the first. We had really heavy-handed stuff in Into Darkness, but here and beyond, they're done really well. They really get the shine, and that's a strength of Lin. Uh, he really makes these character movies work when there's a dozen people in a car racing movie. You still care about these guys. Um, I, I always said the original movies, I didn't care much for them because they're criminals, and I like The Rock, but you get my idea. With this, the characters really get to play and explore and be who they are. And there's some genuinely fun moments, some interesting moments. They do touch on the fact that Nimoy has passed and Yelchin has passed. These, uh, there's a little bit uh, there. By the way, nothing after the credits. You can leave. Um, but with, with this, it, it really did good character stuff. But the problem was, it was very insurrection-like in that it felt all very familiar it felt all very... It even, even joked, Kirk is like, he's like, it's all seeming so episodic. And yet it is. But I guess that works because that's the point at that point. But much like Green Lantern with the racing track, don't blow all this on the thing that you're trying to point out is not as good. So there, I had issues with that. But then things really do pick up. Um, I knew this was coming, but it's very guardians e. And I remember that when Guardians was such a success, Paramount was upset that Into Darkness didn't do nearly as well as Guardians, when by rights it should. To be fair, there's no reason not to, but Guardians was fresh. Star Trek was not as fresh, but, right? But it's got a strong cast, so we can retool this. And you can feel the Guardians' touches in it. But it's not a Guardians clone by any stretch. Don't let anybody tell you it is. But you'll still get the same kind of feel of, ah, after seeing it, that it has. Not nearly as much as Guardians, but I think it does a really, really, really good job in making the characters feel unified, making them feel 
like they matter and everyone has something to do that's important and relevant at all times. And that even is kind of a core theme of the story. I mean, it, one of the characters even tells the bad guy that at one point. It's like, this matters. So, I mean, that's, that's humanity in space. That's Mass Effect. That's Star Trek. That's, the, the, that's nothing new. We've seen that before. But it's always great when it's executed well. The cast is really good. Uh, the new girl as Jayla, um, she's weird, but okay, cool. Um, I always find with movies like this, it gets to an awkward point when you see them running around or fighting, and they're all human except for, you know, funny faces or weird foreheads. So when she's running around, she's all white with, like, black face markings and long white hair, but she's fighting and is using, like, recognizable martial arts. And I don't mean like, oh, I know what style that is, but I've seen that style. It's an actual style. Now, it makes sense that a race with a similar bipedal style and, and uh, type would develop similar fighting styles because we humans have. So it's fair to say they would too when literally everything outside of this is the same, right? That makes sense. At the same time, you know, Vulcans have their hearts, like, down here where the kidney is, and things are different, so the, the pressure and attacks would be different, but the same overall would, would apply. But these movies, and Star Trek did it too, and this is an Abrams thing. He, I said Star Wars did it too, I mean. Um, he'll have weird alien races running around and be there, absolutely there, but they're never at the forefront. Um, the big, the alien things that Han Solo was smuggling, example. And yet, when, it come, when push comes to shove... A lot of humans. Um, with this, there's a bunch of people with different faces and heads and cool things. And it really made it feel like, yeah, aliens. This is a united federation of planets. Cool! They're still all people. Some are blue, some are pink, some are green. Some have head things, some have face things. And the biggest distraction of all of that is probably Idris Elba's crawl. In that when you first see him, it looks almost like he's wearing a thing, like a mask on his head. Because the way he talks, the, the skin doesn't properly even move. And it's kind of rigid and shell-like, I guess. But when he talks, the lips stretch and part of the face stays where it is. Because that's where the thing was applied to his face. And when he talks, it moves around. But later on, it's different kind of stuff and it's fine. But that's always the thing I, I had an issue with. When you put too much on there, you lose the actor. Because this guy's an awesome actor. He's great. And he's, he's really good in this. But it interactions a little bit. And that you don't know what's up. And oh, it takes a while to get there. But when it gets there. Okay you're on board. And then there's more. And it's cool stuff. But man they gotta stop crashing these freaking enterprises. I mean really. I've, we've seen it. They're on the planet. Cool. They were stuck where they were because they lost contact because of this nebula preventing communications. That's all you gotta do. You can do something like that to keep them from being able to transport back or having a barrier. You don't need to destroy the Enterprise just to get them stuck on a planet. Stop doing that, please. We've seen that so many times. And even if this is your first Star Trek movie, it's still a familiar thing. <laughs> like it's, we can move on. Let's be more creative than that, please. When the space battles are happening, it's pretty great. And there's a great callback, and it's a lot of fun there. Overall, this movie is probably the most fun of the three new ones. But I don't see myself re-watching any of it nearly as much as I do the other two. The two I could probably re-watch more often just because Cumberbatch owns everything. This one, the space battle part, I could probably watch over and over and over. But the rest of it, it's kind of forgettable in that odd episode style thing. It's not... I mean, I'm glad I saw it, but... Yeah, it'll, it'll be in the Blu-ray collection at some point, but that's it. I, it's a hard one to recommend. Um, if you're interested even remotely, go see it. Because I was and I enjoyed it, so there you go. Um, if you like the other two, you'll like this one probably more. So there is that. A lot of people said two was a misstep. Uh, and this one makes up for it. So there you go for another part of it. But I absolutely recommend it. 100%. The rating is probably more like a, a 6 or a 7. And I've tried to really gauge that rating thing. And I'm working out a way to do that. But as far as I'm concerned, if you want to see it, it's awesome in 3D. It was in the, the fancy AVX theater. 
If you can see it on a big screen and you want to see it, absolutely do. Because it loses a bit when it's just chip blowing up otherwise. And I think if, you, if you're going to wait around to see it, well then don't bother till Netflix kind of thing. Like don't seek out the DVD for your first purchase to see it if you're going to pass it up in theater. It's a big screen movie. So there you go. But yeah, that's the, this one. I'm going to work on those Hyper Bowl, uh, not Hyper Bowls. Um, there will be a Hyper Bowl coming up on Monday night. I am going to see Batman the Killing Joke. We get one day of screening at 7 p.m. on Monday, so I am going to see. We don't get the 10 o'clock. We don't get the Tuesday Encore. We just get one day, and I got my ticket already, so that's that. But I'm going to work on box officers and get those ready. Um, otherwise, the other Hyper Bowls, I foresee myself doing Sausage Party is an absolute. Suicide Squad is an absolute. And I, I can't not go see Ghostbusters at this point. I kind of got to actually see what the heck is going on. So stay tuned for all that. Box officers are coming. And yeah, that GPC stuff. We will see. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.